Okay. Hi, this is Ebony Bridges, Blonde Bummer, um, and this is Seconds at Art. Okay, everybody, what I really wanted to talk about is the most anticipated rematch in women's boxing between the pound for pound box rec rated number one, Katie Taylor, and number two, uh, Delphine Pearson. How do you, I mean, we know how the first fight went. It turned into a real dog fight. It was very yeah. close. You and me both think uh, that Pearson should have got the verdict. She didn't get it, yeah. but it was a close fight. Um, and so she's going to be out. Is it going to be a repeat or revenge? How do you see this playing out second time round? Look, um, Honestly, um, I, I don't, don't see it as a repeat. You know, KK is really smart. She's a brilliant athlete. Um, yeah. You know, and I think them taking that fight against Christina, another kind of pressure fighter, was a good move for their team. Um, because, you know, um, Christina loves to, to go for, like, have that dog fight as well, you know. So I think that was a really good move. And the way she outboxed Christina, I yeah. think um, that was like almost like a practice, you know, because obviously Christina is not as intense as Pearson. But um, I just think, yeah, I definitely think I see Katie Taylor um, learning from her, you know, mistakes um, and evolving as, a, as an athlete, as she does. She's very professional. Um, you know, I kind of, um, I want to like relate it to the male boxing, but, you know, like AJ and Ruiz, you know, like he got caught into that dog fight as well and look what happened. And then, you know, he, he's a smart enough boxer and he's, he's an athlete and a true champion that he made that adjustment and I just, and, and he just... You know, out, you know, did the outboxing, and I think that's exactly what Katie does. You know, and that's what she did the first, the first couple of rounds of that fight. That's what she was doing, um, brilliantly. So, um, I think if she can have that discipline, which it is very hard to, I know, as a fighter, it's and as a as a like a fighter that likes to fight, it's it is hard to have that discipline to um, to be a smart boxer because you get caught up and you just want to fight. You know, and and I think it's it's honestly um a lot harder to fight smart. It is. And, yeah. um, but I do think that Katie Taylor can definitely do it. She's she's that kind of athlete, um, just like I said, like AJ. Um, and I'm really, really excited for it. Um, it's Go still on. going to be – I can still see a lot of fireworks. I can still see it being, you know, a tough, close fight. But I just see Katie Taylor knowing not to get caught in that dog fight. Well, she's got that incredible pedigree, hasn't she? And that's that's what what really, you know, was lucky. You think she should be able to outskill this. Yes. Yes she should be able to but you know she did get caught up in that dog fight and you were saying about uh, you know the first Ruiz Joshua fight I was actually thinking about the uh, you know about the Sugar Ray Leonard and uh, Roberto Duran fight the first time when you know yes. Duran made that a dog fight one of my favorite fights psychologically and physically into that that real sort of his fight and the second yes. fight was pretty much a shutout because Sugar exactly. Ray exactly killed and and, and and I wonder if that's the way it's going to play out yeah because is that because these these type of boxers like the Sugar Ray Leonard's, like you know your Katie Taylor, like boxer boxes, they can box. You know, it's like they don't. Um, it's not like they're just they've only got one dimension. You know, but it is it is um when you firstly come up against that, I'm sure you know that's one of Katie Taylor's first real dog fights. You know, like you you sometimes you would get caught up with that. It makes total sense. You know, but like you know Sugar Ray Leonard, like you know AJ. You're, if you're a good enough boxer, which I, I totally believe that Katie Taylor is, I think she'll learn, adapt, and she'll overcome that 100%. And I just see her definitely doing a shutout. Boxing, jab, move, jab, move, not staying there, exactly what she did with Christina Lindell. I, 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 that's exactly how I see it. Um, and I also heard, I might have read something, I could be wrong, that um, Pierce soon is coming off some kind of pneumonia or injury. So I'm not sure, you know, she'll be in her A game either. So... That's possible. She went for the Olympic trials. She wanted to, yeah. go, to go to the Olympics. I believe she lost in those trials in London in, in 2020, yeah, was, which is obviously is all some... now, but it just shows you the difference between, yeah, three-round fighting yeah. and 20 round fighting. Um, yeah, but definitely. the thing is, I mean, talking about Pierre she's going to really want the same fight, isn't she? That yeah. plays to her strengths. So she's going to want to drag Katie in. So, I mean, yeah. what would you so if we kind of know what Kate needs to do. We think Kate needs to do is rely on her skills, outbox her, you know, slick, stay on the outside, you know, boxing behind the jab. Pearson needs to drag her into a dogfight. How, how do you think she's going to do that? Do you remember Pearson complained about Taylor in the first fight? She said waging psychological warfare on her. Now, comparing back to the Sugar Ray Leonard fight as well and the Duran fight, Duran drew Sugar Ray into that dogfight long before the first bell. You know, yes. insulting his wife, driving past the hotel, swearing at him, all these yes. types of 
um, and questioning his, his, his manhood and all that sort of thing. Do you think Pierce Sue needs to do something now to annoy Taylor, to get under Taylor's skin, to drag her into that dogfight? What would you do if you needed to get that boxer to fight you? Uh, I would, I'm not, I'm not huge on like, you know, like shit talk. I'm not huge on that. Um, but I would definitely, um, I would definitely be putting out how much stronger I am. You know, I'm feeling the strongest ever, like, you know, and I've learned so much. And I would say, uh, you know, I'm going to bring something new and, and I would be getting her like, okay, you know, you think you, you had me that way, but I learned from that fight as well. And, you know, um, I, I would probably be saying things like that. And yeah, definitely like, you know, saying things like, you know, Katie can't punch, you know, because, you know, like, and I put putting it down, like, like, you know, like, how many knockouts you got? Like, you know, blah, 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 these kind of things. Like, you could totally do that. I think that I'm hoping that Pierce soon has, um, you know, learned and, and, and maybe even with that amateur training, she had learned a little bit more amateur style, you know, that kind of like, who knows. But um, I think Pierce soon still personally needs to keep that pressure on. Um, I, she doesn't have the skill to be able to outbox Katie, no chance. Um, but she has to be smarter on her way in. She has to be smarter with the defense. Um, and she has to be a little bit more patient, maybe. You know, yeah. pick her shots because she has strength. She has that power and Katie is a little bit vulnerable. You've seen her, you know, look a little bit rattled. So if Pierce soon can slow it down, just, you know, like not super slow, but, you know, pick those shots um, and the shots that count, then why not go for, you know, that kind of that kind of um, game plan, so to speak. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, like I said, it, it is going to be a tough, it's going to be, it's going to be a, a very tough fight for, I think, for Pierce soon because Katie Taylor would have learned so much from that fight. Um, and I think Pierce soon could have learned, I would have learned as well, but I just don't, see her changing too much. Yeah. So your pick is Taylor in this fight. Are you going points or yeah. do you think it's stoppage? Points, yeah, points, yeah. I don't yeah. And, and I, a wide I, I points just, margin, yeah. do you think? I, sorry? A wide points margin, do you think it will be a sort of shy if she if she sticks to the right game plan? Or do you think yeah. it's really it's always going to be really tough? Uh, no, I, I do think well, there will be the matches that we've both or the matches that we've both mentioned. Yeah. The second the fight was a shutout. The second yep. uh, Sugar Ray Leonard a drown fight was a shutout after those really closely contested fights. Um, so do you see this playing out the same way or do you think it'll always be a tough fight between these two? I haven't talked about a Sugar Ray Leonard fight, but, you know, also um, Duran wasn't there ment as much mentally for that fight either. Second, you know, yeah, so it wasn't... second fight is still a mystery really, isn't it? The no mass fight. Exactly. So, I mean, there's a lot to that fight. Um, but... Um, Sugar Ray Leonard did obviously outbox him and and um, Duran would do what he did. And I think that I think Pearson could be very similar coming in, not as um, it's, you know, she's only had five weeks notice or six weeks notice or something like this. You know, it's a very different, it's very different circumstances. Um, in that case, um, if she had maybe from the get go, she could be preparing a lot more for it. Who knows? And there's so many things behind it, but I still am not, I still don't see it going any other way than Katie Taylor outboxing the shit out of her, to be honest. Like she's just gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna make it simple. She's just gonna be simple basics, you know, jab, jab and move, one, two, move, one, two, three, move. Maybe if she gets in a little bit in there, she might hold, cause you know, you don't wanna get tagged in there. So do what, you know, like hold and then jab out and do it again. Jab, move, jab, move. Like, you know, one, twos, one, two, threes, fours. But that's it, I don't see her, I see her coming in and out and moving. I don't see her sitting in the center of that ring mm -hmm. at all. Um, because that's just doing what Pierce soon wants, sitting on the rope, sitting in the middle of the ring. And we don't, you know, you don't want to give anyone who fight, you don't want to give them their fight. You know, we know that, that Pierce soon can't box like Katie. So why not box her, you know? And do you think there's going to be any such thing as home advantage here? Obviously, it's 22nd of August. It's in the matchroom back garden, the fourth week of, of Eddie Hearn's fight camp. So no crowd. And uh, do, you, do you think that's going to affect the boxers? How do you think that's going to affect the boxers? How would that affect you? And do okay. you think it's firstly affect either one more. I mean, Katie surely is the one that's used to boxing in front of huge crowds and has her whole career. Yeah, yeah but um, look, I'm not, I'm not too sure about Pearson's amateur um, background. I'm not too sure. Um, but um, I mean, I know that Katie Taylor, for example, I'm sure she's boxed before in, in, in you know, small, like amateur boxing, sometimes in those nationals and those, there's like, 50, 50 people watching. Like, okay, the Olympics is a little bit different, but you know your nationals and your state titles, there's like hardly anyone there. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. she's probably used to also boxing and, and performing without that that loudness and that crowd. Um, but I also just think that, um, and I think Pierce soon, if anything, will need it a little bit more. Yeah. I believe. I, that's how. That's what I think. 
I'm the kind of fighter that would need that would need it. I mean, I mean, I still box my hardest, but oh, get the crowd behind me, and that's it. Like, but in a way, maybe if you don't have the crowd behind you, you might be able to box a bit smarter. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they don't yeah. egg you on. You don't get caught up in it. Because I know, like, if I'm uh, just a style of fighter, I am. Like, I just I want to impress the crowd. I want to want to fight hard, and I and I can't, you know, I can't help doing that sometimes. Although I get told all the time I have to be smart, but I like a fight, and um, so I think. It could work, you know. It's 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 so hard, you know. I'm one of these people that look at all these angles, but um, yeah. I think no matter what, it's going to be an incredible fight for female boxing. It's a fight that all the fans have looked forward to. It's all the fight that all us female fighters look forward to. You know, it was a great um replacement of the Serrano fight um because I think yeah. Katie, I think Katie needs this for the unfinished business. You know what I mean? To really prove herself, because unfortunately, when you have uh, a performance that the fans don't, you know, like it's it's it kind of, it, you know what the fans are like. Like, all of a sudden, like, you know, you're shit. <laughs> like, you know, oh, maybe you're not as good as I thought because, like, it wasn't a perfect it wasn't a perfect 10-round fight. You didn't win every single round, so that means that um, you're shit. No. So I think, um, in a way, it's going to be good. It's going to get, you know, again, more fans and just showing that she, um, yeah, she wants to give the fans what they want and she's happy. And that's, that's you know, that's women's boxing. We want to, we're happy to fight people. You know, that's a big thing. We've been fighting whoever and anyone we can for years because we had no options. So that's the good thing about female fight, female boxing. And hopefully it doesn't change too much. But, yeah. So moving on to your own career, Emily. Yeah. I, mean, I know you had, you had a decent amateur background as well. Um, yeah. And then turning pro and, and you're 4-0 and now and you've got your eye on some yeah. names in the UK. And what, and what made you do, because you were a very successful bodybuilder before as well. So what made you make that transition to boxing? Okay, so, I mean, I've been a massive fan of boxing my whole life. I mean, like, just watching boxing, you know, I'm huge. Um, you know, from, like, when I was in my teens, I was like, Costa Zoo was my hero. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, so, like, I'm, like, big, like, big, uh, been in boxing. I did martial arts from the age of five. Um, you know, I did karate. I had my black belt. I did kickboxing. Um, so I was always into martial arts. I was always into fighting. I was into street fighting. Anything I could punch and hit. I got a bit older and I realized it's not really smart and it costs money. <laughs> so um, I got in, I, I changed my life, you know, I changed my, my mentality and who I was. And, um, you know, I went on a straight and narrow and that's what bodybuilding did for me. It got me off that kind of rebellious, crazy kind of, you know, whatever I was on. Um, and that bodybuilding taught me some serious discipline. Yeah. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, you think body, you think boxing is discipline? Mm. Mm mm. Bodybuilding is next level. So, so bodybuilding makes boxing seem quite easy, like you know, so to speak. Because I and I and I love boxing. I love punching shit, like you know. So when I did my bodybuilding, and I I achieved everything in my bodybuilding. I got national titles, I got state titles. I did international competitions. You know, I won numerous things. I was a judge. Um, I've been. I still coach now. Um, I got a lot of girls in like a team that I coach for for their competitions. Um, I was like, I don't want to do this life anymore I don't you know I don't really weights anymore I'm 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 over this dieting life like you know I was like full-on like what do I want to do you know what do I what am I good at or what do I always like and I'm like oh you know what like I like punching shit like I like hitting things I've always liked fighting um the only reason I couldn't fight and actually professionally or amateur back then was because it was illegal in in Australia or in most states in Australia I wasn't even we weren't even allowed to fight until 2008 females in Australia or in in my state it was like one state you could fight and back then when I was like 14, I'm like, I'm not traveling to another state to fight. Like, you know, it wasn't really, wasn't really, um, what do you call it? I don't know the word. I don't know really with my vocabulary. Anyways, it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, something in my mind. So that's, you know, so it never was really um, possible. So then when it was all kind of allowed, I was like, okay, well, I was still bodybuilding. Um, I was like, this is pretty cool, but I'm on my bodybuilding path. So once I got over that, I was like, yeah, hell yeah, this is what I want to do. Like, let's, let's smash some stuff. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's do this. And because of my, my background, as in, you know, obviously always been a fighter and a fighter from the heart and the spirit of what I've been through and just, like, you know, fights, actual fights. Like, I mean, I've, I've always, it's never been an issue for me. I've always, you know, so I think I progressed really fast. And also I'm very disciplined from my bodybuilding and determined that when I set my mind on something, um, there's no quit, there's no stop, and I do everything. And I'll train, like, I'll train like crazy because I need to get better. And obviously, I mean... If only the amount of boxing, you know, if we could just watch boxing on YouTube and like just be amazing boxers. But I do think that 
the amount of boxing that I watch, you know, I can talk, you bring up any fight, I can probably talk to you about it in and out, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, I know that much boxing, so I'm always watching it. Not that it really helps, but it does a little bit, you know, because I'm always learning and I might watch a fight and then I'll go in my garage and I'll try some shit out for a bit. I want to try that, like Canelo, like, you know, like, or whatever. So I'm always kind of learning and I think that's what made my my progression really fast. I've only been actually fighting for three, three and a half years. Yeah. My first amateur fight, my first, I, I fought amateur for two years and I did, I had 30 fights. I was 26 and four, um, mm -hmm. golden gloves, state title, all that kind of stuff. But I just smashed it out. And then I was like, you know what? Got to get this stuff off my head, get these little gloves on and let's, let's knock out some people. <laughs> you know? So that was, that was pretty much where it came and that's where I'm at. And yeah. you know, that's, that's the story. You've got a big Twitter follower in the UK already. Uh, you know, yeah. you're making waves. And I think you've got some targets over here, haven't you? I mean, we want to get you over here to fight as soon as we can. And we'd yeah. love to see you. You've got some specific targets, some people you're looking at. Well, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's funny because I didn't really have, like, real targets, you know. Like, I'm just like, I just want to come and fight in the UK because I love the British fans. Um, you know, this is before I even had the following. I'm like, I love just British boxing. Like, I love the fans, the stadiums. You know, like, and I know if they see me, they'll love me. I love the way I fight because I've got that Ricky Hatton kind of style, like that real, you know, like go in there and just fight. Um, and um, before I even got this, the following, I, I was wanting to go over there. I thought, okay, how can I get over there? I can just get over there and I'll fight whoever, you know. And then I got on Twitter and then everyone started doing the whole me and Sh Shannon Courtney thing. Even though, mind you, Shannon Courtney's heavier than me, but I don't mind, you know. Like uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. And I, I wasn't really fussed on it too much because I thought, oh yeah. Whatever, and I started thinking, okay, well, you know what? Actually, this would be a pretty cool fight. And everyone, whenever you hear my name in the UK, it's always Shannon Courtney. But um, personally, I want to see her get through ball first. So okay, I mean, went before Taylor, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, you know. And I've watched Shannon's fights. I mean, I think it would be a good fight. I, I think it would be um, an exciting fight. I think in general, it would be a great sales, a great fight for sales. I think it'll be able to market it really well. There's no bullshit in that, you know. Um, I think that you know it's gonna it's gonna draw a lot of attention. I mean, I'm all about that, giving the fans what they want. You want me to fight this person, I'll fight him. You know, um, I don't care. You know, I'm not. I'm a little bit older. I don't have you know a huge long. I don't have another ten years, or maybe <laughs> fingers crossed. But I don't really see that. I'm not 20 years old. You know, I'm not 25 years old. So I can't. I'm not gonna sit here and play around. I want to get. I want to get. I want to. I want to see my fans. I want to fight for my fans. And if I've got fans in the UK, I want to fight there. And I want to have good fights, you know. Um, so, yeah, I'm just happy to fight whoever, uh, really, you know. Um, UK, America, whatever. So, yeah. Um, and what about the next steps, Ebony? So, obviously, we, you know, we would like to see the Shannon Courtney or a Rachel Bull fight in the UK in the future. You know, but what about the immediate next steps? Your, your next your next yeah. outing, anything planned so, and, and training at the moment? Yeah, so it's so hard here in Australia. Um I did have a, I have a fight lined up in September, a kind of like a COVID comeback fight, you know. Um, a girl that's actually been calling me out here. Um, if she watches this, you're crazy. <laughs> but she's calling me out, so, you know, she wants to smoke, she's going to get it. But um, so I'm going to fight her just because she wants it. Um, and then, you know, I think it's going to be a good fight for me. Um, she's, she's a tough she's a tough opponent. She comes forward. She's, she likes to, you know, just come forward and throw, throw punches. Um, but, yes, yeah, so I think it's going to be a good fight in that sense because... I kind of like that because I get to then that means I get to come forward and sit and punch up with her, you know what I mean? And, and I just know that I'm able to sit and punch, and then they stop coming forward. So yeah. um, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to that fight. I don't like fights where they run away from me. I, I hate it, but um, you know, um, for personally for me, you know, stylistic, I do love the, the people that want to come and fight. I love those fights. I don't like chasing people down. Um, so I think that if I, if this fight happens, it'll be a good fight. Um, it's meant to be. In September, there is um, word and talk of a Sooner card on a big card that hopefully you guys in the UK will be able to watch. Um, but I'm just in the works for that. Um, had another option, uh, another talks. Again, it's all just, heat, you know, it's all throwing up in the air because of COVID. Um, yeah. Fighting in November against a well-experienced undefeated fighter. Um, I'm hoping that happens because that would be a great fight for me. Great experience fight for me. And um, especially for Australia, a really big probably one of the best female fights in Australia for a long time. Um, so if that fight happens, fingers crossed, um, that'll be really, really exciting again. Um, and yeah, if that happens us this year and then they'll come over to the UK and whatever, Commonwealth titles, I don't care, a fight, knock some yeah. bitches out. <laughs> yeah. So we're hoping for a busy end of the year and then maybe in the UK next year. Oh, fingers.
fingers crossed. I'm hoping for a busy, you know, Australia. I'm, I'm hoping we can fight. Um, you know, there was talks with my manager. My manager's split T, um, David or David uh, McWhorter, um, in New York, and um, Brian Cohen. We, they worked together with me. Um, they did talk about, you know, earlier flying me to Canada to get some fights. Like anywhere that we can go, um, I want to get these fights. So you know, um, I'm 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 not fussed on fighting in Australia. I, like I said, I. I I feel like I want to be overseas. I want to be in my camps overseas. The quality of training, the quality of sparring partners is just out of this world overseas, like compared to Australia. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's, so I think that's my best options if I want to get better and um, I want to have the good fights. Yeah. So, okay. That's, that's it. That's for me. And yeah. then, um, yeah. <laughs> You'll be very, very welcome in the UK. We really look forward to seeing you when you do oh, get over. I, can't. I honestly can't wait. I, I'm, but you know what? I think what I'm. Um, it, it, it depends, obviously, on promoters in the UK. I've talked to some, um, um, but I'm one person doesn't really talk like talking about things until they're happening. I don't do that, you know. Um, so um, if I do come, there will be like I'll be. Uh, I want to come before I fight. It's like a like a bit of a a, a meet and greet. I want to do that. I want to come over there and I want to see the UK. I want to train in some gyms. I want to meet some trainers. I want to meet people. Um, you know, this is the kind of shit that I want to do. Like you know. Um, um, that's, that's what I thrive off, you know? Yeah. So, um, I'd love to do that. Feel myself. I've never been to the UK. I've never been to Europe. And I think that would be a smart move for me just to see if I could, you know, how long it takes me to get over that jet lag, you know, how long it, you know, all these kind of things. It's a long yeah. flight. So, so I might just come over for a bit of a party first and then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I shouldn't say that because all my followers <laughs> are crazy. I, I, I made a joke. Oh, I didn't. It wasn't a joke. I was serious. I did say that after I fight in the UK, we'll have a big after party and we'll have a party. And then some Sorry. of my like close, my closer UK followers sent me a message and uh, you probably shouldn't have said that. You're gonna get, you're gonna get like in trouble. I go, I don't care. It'll be fun, you know. Whatever, like you know, I, I love, I love boxing. I love the fans. I love the boys. You know, it's, 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 it's all, it's all happy for me. I'm very grateful. I'm very blessed with it all. So, got to make the most of it. Yeah, brilliant. And I was really excited to hear earlier that you were training with Nigel Ben sometimes down in Sydney. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know it's 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 unreal. I haven't actually because as you know, his shoulders are no good at the moment. He's getting the cortisone. He had he had some um, PRP I think recently, um, so I'm probably he can't hold the pads yet at the moment. But before he went over um, last year, when I was um, coming back from my ankle injury because I broke my ankle last year in that debut fight. Um, anyways, I was coming back from that, and um, yeah, he was doing the pads for me, and um, that was really good. We we did a lot of work, you know, quite a bit of work together, and yeah, it was really, really, really exciting. Um, well, so you hopefully, been down here, and you know, he, he, he's such a great guy, and and what a great guy to get, you know, to talk to about what the fight seems like in the UK, what oh, the gyms, are, where the trainers are, where to go, yeah. where to get the spar, and yeah, great guy. Yeah, well, you know, for him to say me, tell me that I punch like a man. I mean, he's not the only one that said that to me. I literally was down the coast two weeks ago to a, the New South Wales rep coach, um, our, like our, our representative, like Boxing Australia coach. Um, he held pads for me the first time. He said the same thing. So, I mean, but when Nigel Ben says it with his power, and he was like, yeah. he literally was like, whoa. <laughs> he's like, you hit like a man. And I was just like, yeah. And I'm like, he goes, don't get offended. Because, you know, he's lovely. He's so polite. He's like, don't get offended. And I'm like, no, no, no. But he's also very hard. You know, like a hard, hard like we're training, like um, because I'm a, I'm a joker. You can tell, you know, I like a banter. And so he put me, so I guess, you know, you gotta be serious. You know, none of these joking around. Like when we're training, you know, I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> he goes, just don't talk, don't say anything. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good. You need that. You need that discipline. I just, I'm, I'm just like that. So yeah. sometimes I'll have a, I'll have a little bit of, a, you know, a, a, a joke, and it's like, box. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. But, but <laughs> I just got to get that finesse, right? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I've been working on it. You guys yeah. will see. Yeah, well, we look forward to seeing that. Yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait to show you what I, you know, what I've learned and what I've been practicing during COVID. My yeah. sparring's been unreal. Uh, my sparring partners, not sure they're loving it, but um, <laughs> it's been unreal. I'm so excited. Um, the more time I have, the more I learn, the better it is. You know what I mean? It's all about experience. And um, each fight, I get better and better. Um, and I think that's what's really exciting about fighting. You know, I just want to pump them out so I can, because I know every time I have a fight, I learn something new and something else to take home. So, you know. Yeah, well, we look forward to seeing yeah. that. Sorry, I talk so much. Did they oh, tell you this? Really I talk <laughs> 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 well, we came to talk. Anyway, 
I know, I'm just, it's, it's boxing. I can't so I'm so much. It's shut up, Ebony. Like, <laughs> just like, just like, just like, what do you look like? Go, excuse me, can I have a like a say some words and like, it's your turn now. You may talk. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just blown away. No, that's <laughs> yeah. we've, got, we've got we've got that prediction. We've got that, that that Taylor Pearson prediction. So you think it's going to be it's, it's going to be it's going to be Taylor by by a good few rounds. She's going to box smart, yeah. box clever, and frustrate Pearson. And, and yeah. obviously we're looking forward to seeing your development and what you've been working on during this period. And you know I'm sure the sky's the limit for your career. So we look forward to seeing you back in the ring later in the year. And we really look forward to to the UK. Thanks very much, yeah, everyone. Can't wait. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate uh, appreciate the chat and um, yeah, and I, I really am looking forward to this P soon fight and you know Katie Taylor. Let's yeah. go, Katie. And it's going to do a great job, isn't it? Because it's going to raise the profile of women's boxing so high. I mean, it's a really oh, definitely. It's the first time we've had a women's boxing hugely anticipated rematch that we're all talking about. Yeah, so. well, you know, I mean, Terry Harper and Jonas is another big one as well. I'm yeah. very excited. I'm, I'm very excited for that one as well. Um, but yeah, this Katie Taylor, you know, she's. She's how can you not love her, you know? Yeah, and all yeah. those all those fans that talk shit and turned on her because she like got into a bit of a brawl, you know? Like they're gonna they're gonna be eating their words. I don't see Pearson winning more than like two rounds, to be honest. Yeah. Right. But yeah. <laughs> hey, if I see Nigel, I tell him you said hi. Oh, please do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I will. I will. I will. Yeah, we'll see him a bit. Yeah, we we'll love to back next time he's back over. I mean, we yeah. had. We had with him. He is just so engaging, entertaining, interesting, fascinating. Yeah, he's 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 a, he's 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 brilliant. He's um he's a real you know got so much charisma. Um yeah. and you know and 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 that's what made him as well as a boxer. You know and I think character is yeah. really important oh, in boxing. Him. Love him. You know I absolutely love Nigel Ben. If you were around in that era when he was fighting, you were not yeah. Ben. You know what I mean? I, I've actually I've I'll, I'll I'll have to show you this, but um I've drawn. I draw. I don't know if you know. I draw, and I've drawn a um, a picture of Nigel Ben. Um, a really quite good, good good drawing of him. I could probably go and grab it, but I don't want. To, I'll do it later. But um, yeah, he's um, I, I, I he's one of my favourite. He's him, Nigel Ben, um, Nigel Ben, Hatton, and Lennox Lewis. My three top fave um, British boxers. So <laughs> yeah, and so for me to like live around the corner is like what? <laughs> but now, but now you know with the you know. With um, just being friends and stuff, you know, get over it. Yeah, yeah. Just, I mean, it's not. I've seen over here. I'm sure you'll bump into it when you come to the UK. You know, I mean, he's running his gym up in Manchester. He's, he's training fighters, and you know, I expect there'll be an opportunity, you know, to, to go up there and, and train up there, maybe train with him, and you know, get some sparring up there. Incredible! I can't wait to get some sparring in the UK. I've talked a little bit to Amy Timlin, um, you know, and Terry, even Steffi Bull. He's invited me down there, so I'll, uh, yeah. I'm super excited to get over there. Yeah. All right. Brilliant. <laughs> No, I really do appreciate your time, guys. Um, you know, like I, I, I love the UK. I love the fans, and um, it's such a pleasure and a privilege for me to be on your, on your, um, on your, whatever channel. You know, because um, I listen to a lot of your stuff. I watch your stuff, and um, I'm big. You know, like I said, I'm big in boxing. Like I'm a fan. I'm not just a fighter. So, yeah.